So yeah, you talked about two things, sleep apnea and sleep deprivation. Yeah? Correct. Um, I'll start with the sleep apnea, um, and can you talk about the effect of um, C CPAP on blood pressure? Um, yes. Okay. The, yeah. the, um, the connection between uh, obstructive sleep apnea and systemic hypertension has drawn a lot of uh, attention in the last 15, 20 years. It's been well known that 30 years ago when people were looking at people with snoring or obstructive apnea, mm -hmm. about 50% of them had systemic hypertension. Mm -hmm. But the the next 20 years, all the studies looking at uh, epidemiological studies yeah. were, were clouded by obesity, cigarette smoking, mm. and and um, lack of uh, you know good quality control trials. Mm -hmm. The turning point came in about in the uh, uh, the early 1990s mm -hmm. when there were some very nicely conducted dog trials, mm -hmm. canine trials, in which they created sleep apnea in these canine dogs in these right. canine uh, uh, animals, and they were fully instrumented. Mm -hmm. So they had intravascular markings, and and, um, and what they identified was that a dog who was given obstructive sleep apnea at night mm -hmm. had daytime hypertension when it was breathing normally. Mm -hmm. So that really was one of the key mm -hmm. pivotal pivotal uh, animal trials that kept e all other factors completely controlled: right, right. diet, no smoking, exercise, etc. Mm -hmm. So, and then once they alleviated the sleep apnea, the blood pressure returned to normal. Because of that trial. A lot of other uh, further human intervention mm. trials were undertaken in which hypertensive obstructive apnea patients treated their obstructive apnea, blood pressure was falling about mm. two to three millimetres of mercury, mm. uh, not a, a large fall as, as large as we thought because of the confounding effect that a lot of these people either had normal or, or mild hypertension to start with or on drug treatment. Mm. When we look at at the data coming from islands such as Samoa where drug treatment of hypertension is not as great mm. and there was one study in Germany that was meticulously well done mm. there were changes of between um, about 10 and 15 millimetres of mercury mm. fall in blood pressure in mean blood pressure mm. when you treat the sleep apnea so <coughs> so what you're trying to say is that um, it, uh, there, were, there were no other interventions involved correct in okay. yeah so when you've got a clean population, removing other mm. uh, extraneous factors such as diet, cigarettes, or drug treatment mm -hmm. of hypertension, the impact of reversing sleep apnea appears to be very significant in, right. of the order of about 10 to 15 millimetres of mercury fall in systemic mm. blood pressure. Right. Um, what's quite interesting, you mentioned um, vibrational injury to endothelial cells. Yes. And in particular, you said it, it, it affected the carotid yes. and the femoral artery. Yes. Um, yeah, it's, it's, but, so so um, that's an observational study that, that really came from Westmead uh, Hospital in Sydney, John Wheatley being the senior author. But there's been the observation that um, people who snore and have an obstructive sleep apnea appear to have a predominance of either cerebrovascular disease mm -hmm. or ischemic heart disease. So both the carotids and the coronary arteries are exposed to this vibrational pressure change, mm -hmm. whereas the femoral arteries are not. Mm -hmm. And so from a clinical point of view, we rarely see people who have peripheral vascular disease mm -hmm. with intermittent claudication, mm -hmm. but we see a lot of patients who've had stroke and uh, ischemic heart disease. Mm -hmm. So this vibrational issue has come up that there may be vibrational uh, damage which is unique to snoring and obstructive sleep apnea mm. which will preferentially affect the carotid or the coronary arteries. Mm. Further interventional work needs to be done mm. uh, but certainly some of the early data is suggesting that that appears to be the case and uh, when we um, and I suppose the concept here is that atherosclerosis is a regional disease. Mm. It's not affecting all branches of the, of the uh, arterial tree equally. Mm. And perhaps obstructive sleep apnea will uh, focus some of the vascular disease to the arteries that are uh, affected by vibrational damage. Okay, very good. Um, just moving on along to sleep deprivation. Yes. Um, the benefits of uh, siestas you, you mentioned, yes. and um, my question is like whether you can catch up. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we, we think uh, sleep deprivation is a little bit like the World Bank. You can take a loan from the World Bank, but mm. you may not have to return it. Mm. Um, uh, the, the, 
We think that if you are sleep deprived acutely, uh, you can um, you can recuperate that lost sleep by in, you know, increased sleep duration. And that's what happens commonly in society mm. with the weekend prolonged sleep that many people have. Um, however, the effects of chronic sleep deprivation may not be as clear cut. Um, there are, at, I'm not aware of any good trials that have looked at what happens when you get someone who's chronically sleep deprived mm -hmm. and revert them back to, towards normal uh, sleep duration. Mm -hmm. There have been a number of trials, very, very much sort of just prospective um, trials where people have voluntarily mm -hmm. deprived themselves of sleep mm -hmm. and they've had disastrous changes in their personalities. Mm -hmm. Now whether they return to normal um, is, is not clear. Most importantly for, for a, an audience at a metabolic syndrome mm -hmm. um, conference, is what effect does chronic sleep deprivation have on uh, autonomic control mm -hmm. and metabolic control? Mm -hmm. Um, the evidence to date would suggest that people who are chronically sleep deprived mm. are more likely uh, to be sympathetically deranged, in other words have elevated sympathetic activity, impaired uh, parasympathetic, parasympathetic activity, have an altered appetite which is mm. probably key um, and, uh, and more likely to have a metabolic syndrome with systemic hypertension and, um, and abnormal glucose and uh, mm. cholesterol profiles. Mm. Um, one of the aspects that uh, I think, which I didn't talk about, and that is shift work. Yeah. About a third of the world's um, population in developed countries are shift workers. Mm -hmm. And shift work in itself is a cardiovascular risk, which is often overlooked. Shift workers are generally two hours sleep deprived compared with non-shift workers. Mm -hmm. They're more likely to be overweight and they're more likely to be smokers mm -hmm. and also less likely to access healthcare system and mm -hmm. information because they're at work mm -hmm. at night and sleeping in the daytime when mm -hmm. a lot of the availability of exactly. healthcare goes on. Mm -hmm. So the effects of sleep deprivation is, is there's a circadian aspect to it. In other words, there's the the time at which you sleep, yep. uh, which is important, and also the duration of sleep, and also the quality of sleep, yep. and and that's where sleep apnea, fragmenting sleep, uh, impairs the, the quality of sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and just to, to conclude, um, which is more uh, detrimental, you think, sleep apnea or sleep deprivation? Well, this is an opinion, not a fact. Yep. Uh, I, I think that sleep deprivation is a big issue in society mm -hmm. and and the the sleep deprivation issue is is not just the cardiovascular illness but it's the it's the personality change mm -hmm. um, it's uh, the, the the accidents whether they be fatal whether they be non-fatal mm -hmm. uh, whether they work related whether they're um, uh, transport related um, they can be catastrophic mm -hmm. and you know we talk about you know, whether 68 deaths out of 16,000 patients randomised in a drug trial. Mm. Well, um, we think a third of all motor vehicle, colli all fatal motor vehicle collisions are sleep related. Mm. There's a sleep deprivation factor related. And um, so in, in an order of, of um, priority, um, the impact of sleep deprivation on accidents is huge. Mm. Now, the impact of sleep deprivation on cardiovascular disease, well, we're still you know, we're still early days. Mm. Um, there's not a lot of research going on uh, enough, but the research that is coming through appears to indicate that sleep deprivation does contribute to impaired um, glucose metabolism, autonomic control. The impact of sleep apnea versus sleep deprivation, uh, I'm not sure. I, I, I think there may be, uh, if someone has had sleep apnea for several years, maybe they develop adaptive mechanisms, mm. uh, but it's, it's speculative at this yeah. point.